person, at least for a few days, you get some bliss. Uh, and then you get bored with each other, <laughs> where you see each other's faults, because there's always faults. And then things cool down and it becomes boring. Uh, this is material relationship. But in spiritual relationship, there are no faults. There no, are no imperfections in Krishna. Uh, Krishna has uh, perfect qualities. And he has unlimited qualities. Unlimited transcendental qualities. And we never get tired of this. We never become bored with Krishna. Uh, because Krishna has these qualities in uh, quantity as deep as the ocean. Well, like a bottomless ocean without any limit. So Krishna's qualities are not a part of this material world. In fact, the qualities that we experience in this material world are simply a subset or a tiny, tiny sample of Krishna's actual qualities. See, Krishna has so many nice qualities. And all these qualities are eternal. They're beginningless, they're endless, and they're infinite. Uh, so we cannot understand this thing with our tiny brain. By speculation, you can never understand. Uh, just like if I tell you about the wonderful raspberry cheesecake <laughs> that uh, we had for dessert one time. Remember, we made that in, what was it, Mexico, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I get my, my tongue begins to salivate just thinking about it. Huh? I could sit here all night and describe it, but unless you taste it for yourself, you can't really know how good it was, how delicious it was. Similarly, you can't really know how good this Krishna consciousness is, how tasty it is, how wonderful it is unless you taste it for yourself. And once you taste it, then just like that cheesecake, you're going to want it again and again. <laughs> uh, because this eternal relationship with Krishna existed before this material world was created. And it will exist eternally after the end of this material world. Whereas all these material relationships that we have now are based on the body, and because the body is temporary, one of these days they will end. Anything that has a beginning also has an end. But our relationship with Krishna never ends. It never began. It has always existed. Just like our consciousness, our soul, has always existed. Can you remember a time when you weren't conscious? <laughs> of course not. You see, so... Consciousness and the soul exist on that paradoxical, uh, hyperlogical platform of transcendental existence, transcendental logic. The logic of love, the ob logic of absolute existence. This is a different ontology. It's a different world. Uh, it's a world that you can't find out by going out there through the senses. You can't even find it through the mind, through speculation. You can only find it by going inside, going within the heart, and coming directly face to face with God. This is the process of Krishna consciousness. Once you taste this process, once you experience this sweet taste, you don't want anything else. You only want to taste it again and again and again. Uh, we know so many devotees who maybe they had a bad experience in the temple or the organization or something like that. And so they went outside and then they tried to, to give up Krishna consciousness. They tried to forget about Krishna. They tried to avoid topics having to do with Krishna. But after some time, they find themselves coming back again and again and reading Prabhupada's books and chanting again and again. They can't stay away for very long. Uh, because the taste of this Krishna consciousness is so nice. When the soul, being pure consciousness, is in touch with the dull material energy, 
Then there's suffering, a very deep existential suffering of the soul, uh, because there's no reciprocation. There's no, really no relationship between the soul and material objects. If we imagine some relationship between ourself and the material world, we do so at the price of denying our real nature, of pretending that we're this material body. And then, of course, because it's false, there's so many troubles, so many difficulties, so many things that don't make sense. Uh, and of course, eventually it has to end. But when the soul, being pure consciousness, is in touch with the source of consciousness, huh? Krishna, this is a fully compatible situation. The soul and Krishna are of a very similar quality, almost the same. Uh, we've been going through the qualities of Sri Krishna the last couple of weeks, leading up to Janmashtami, Krishna's appearance day. And of these 64 qualities, the first 50 qualities, which we finished in the last darshan on Saturday night, the first 50 qualities, are shared by the living entities to some degree. And tonight we'll begin talking about the qualities of Sri Krishna that are not shared by the living entities, but that belong only to the personality of Godhead. Uh, and there are 10 more qualities that belong only to the personality of Godhead. And then finally, there are four qualities that belong only to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. And that's what makes him the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That, we'll take questions later. That's what makes him the Supreme Personality of Godhead is that he has these special transcendental qualities that not even Narayan, not even Vishnu, not even Lord Ramachandra can display. Uh, not even Balaram, his first expansion, can display these qualities. Therefore, we can understand from this uh, analysis of the qualities of Sri Krishna that he is the original source from which everything else has come. Janmad yasya yataha. Uh, that's the uh, Vedanta Sutra, the first sutra. The prelude of Vedanta Sutra is now let us inquire into Brahman. Atato Brahma Jignasa. Uh, so if we inquire, then what will be the answer? He is the source of everything. Janmad Yasyayata, from which everything has taken birth, including ourself. And because we are similar in quality to Sri Krishna, when we're in contact with him, then we feel happy. We feel the normal condition of the spirit soul. We don't hanker for any outside material pleasure. Uh, we don't accept any material attachments or material designations. We don't identify with any material objects, such as the body and so on. And because of this, we experience tremendous freedom uh, detachment. Because why? We are not in touch with the sources of suffering. The material world, the material body, the material mind. Uh, instead, we're in, in touch with the source of bliss, Krishna. Krishna means the ocean of pleasure, the reservoir of, of bliss, uh, the source of everything wonderful, of everything good. When we're in touch with Krishna, then we naturally feel happy. We don't require any sense gratification to be happy. Actually, the sense gratification is not happiness. It's simply uh, dull, to, to dull our senses so that we're less aware of the suffering of the material world. Uh, but the suffering is there anyway, just in the background for a few minutes. And then it comes right back again. So we can't get satisfaction from this material world. We can't get satisfaction from material relationships either. 
But this relationship with Krishna is intrinsically satisfying due to the nature of the spirit soul and the nature of the Lord. Now, being both spiritual, they're naturally compatible. And Krishna, he likes to reciprocate the relationships with his devotees. He says, ye yata mang prapadyante, that however they surrender to me, I reciprocate accordingly. So he's, he's not attached to any particular mode of relationship. He will accept devotional service in any mood or any style. Uh, as long as we follow the principles given in the scriptures, as long as we follow the system that Krishna has given of approaching a bona fide guru situated in the lineage from Krishna himself, uh, and surrender, perform devotional service, and uh, place relevant in 